Welcome back everybody. This is Kevin Hogan. This is Hypnotic Storytelling, making narrative transportation work for you right now. How do you know, this is video three, this is video three, how do you know if your story is working? How do you know if you're really transporting that person from over here to over here? How do you know if you're taking them out of their world and putting them into the world that you want them? There's a number of things that are gonna happen. The first thing is, is, is that the person will have story consistent emotional responses. You're telling a story about the main character having a disease or their friend having a disease or, or an illness or they got into a car accident or something like that happened, right? So the next thing that we want to observe is, is the person responding in such a way that it's obvious that they're in that same emotional state that you are and that your main character are as telling the story. If not, you have not hit the empathy button. And if you haven't succeeded at hitting the empathy button, you're going to have to connect better. And we'll talk about that in a later video. The next step is, is, is the person's critical thinking and analytical thinking processes reducing? Are they going down? Now, by the way, if, if the person says to you, oh, oh, you know what, Kev, that happened to me too. I was over there too and one day and something similar just happened just like that to me. All right, you've told a poor story here. That means that you told the story for self-gratification. That's not what we're looking for. That's not going to work. The person needs to have reduced critical thinking, not be so bored that they're looking for similar events in their life. Okay, so what we're looking for is less critical thinking, less analysis when they're, you're done telling the story. You're looking for things like, oh my gosh, what kind of makeup did she have on? Or what color was it? Or was she wearing a dress or did she have pants on when that happened? Oh my gosh. Or what kind of a shirt did she have on? Or what color was her hair anyway? Or any of those kind of questions. Those say the person's still in the story and they're like trying to get it even more after you finished. So now you know that you can add this to the story the next time you tell it and it's going to be much, much more effective. Next up, um, the, the third piece is that their story thoughts increase. Story thoughts increase. That means that they're thinking about the, 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 the plot of the story. Like, oh my gosh, what would that happen if what would happen if that was real life? Or what would happen if that happened in our country instead of over there? Or how would we stop that from happening if that were to happen here versus happening over there? Those are all story thought increases. Okay, those are the things that we're looking for. That means you're doing a good job telling your story. Another one is the person begins to have story consistent beliefs. This is one of the reasons we're telling the story, right? Is we want people to respond with a belief that's similar to the message that we're conveying in the story. And that's exactly what you want to have the person communicating with you about when you're done with your story. You want them to say, so what? So really, what really matters in life is that we care about people, or what really matters in life is, is that we're actually able to take care of our family, or what really matters in life is, is that we love people, or what really matters in life is, is that we're focused on freedom and independence and things like that. Whatever the, whatever the value idea concept is that you're trying to get across, whatever the belief structure is, there's one specific belief for that this story is, is illuminating. It's not illustrating it, it's illuminating it. It's bringing it out in such a way that the person doesn't evaluate it critically, but they think, oh my gosh, you know what, that's right. We really do want this to happen in life. That means, and when they communicate those kind of messages to you in, in, a, in, a, in almost any way, you have won, you've done a good job with your story. And finally, are there intentions? Consistent. So listening after the story, you've told your story, are they saying something like, you know what, next time I see that kind of a person over there, I'm going to do just exactly that. I'm going to be just like that guy. I, oh my gosh, I never realized it was such a hard problem. I, I'm absolutely going to do that. Or, wow, I never knew that this was had the case. I mean, I'll just be so careful of this in the future. I never knew that parking in a handicapped space where there's only one could be such a big deal. It could really screw up a person's life. I had no idea. I'll never do that again. Or whatever it is, if they're starting to offer you story consistent intentions and they're telling you this, you have accomplished the goal of telling a great story, which is a rare event, by the way. You're talking two to five percent of all stories are good. Almost all stories are poorly told. Once you start getting story consistent messages like this from your listener, you're winning big time. Now, 
How do we tell a more complex story so we tell it well and get those same kind of responses, right? So in other words, it's not just like you telling a short two minute story, but this is a more complex story. Maybe it's a book, maybe it's a movie, maybe it's a short story, maybe it's a, um, uh, a video you're making for YouTube. Um, perhaps it's, it's uh, you're giving a five minute presentation at an, for an audience or a meeting over here. Well, in this case, you just take basically what a story needs to be to be effective, which is that there is an everyday person here, person every day, person right here. That's me, okay, and I'm gonna tell the story. And I'm going about my day, and then all of a sudden, a story comes in, plot, a plot, right, and hits me in the face. And now all of a sudden, I wanna make this video for you, and I wanna get this accomplished for you, but I also got to do that over there. And so the story, this problem has emerged over here and it's kind of taken me away, whether I want to go or not. And I sort of have to make a decision. Am I going to stay here on the Titanic while it goes down or am I actually going to do something and see if I can save somebody's life? Okay, fine, I'll go see if I can save somebody's life. And so now, instead of me going through the rest of my day just making videos for you, which is what I'd really like to do, I'm probably going to have to go and do something else. What is that something else? That's what we're gonna find out. At the end of that story, I need to have become a changed person in some way that's identifiable to you, the listener. And the story also has to be resolved. Either the Titanic went down, everybody died, Titanic went down, some people lived, some people died. But you want the story to be told in such a way that the person actually cares about what happened, not only to the big picture, but really to the main character of your story. And the key moment, the key moment is when the person's going about their day and the story just whoo, just hits them right there and it consumes them. And I'll give you several examples of that later on in the video series of just how to tell that story, just that cool story right there. Now, a few things you want to ask yourself. First of all, what is the point of the story? If you know the point of the story, what your outcome is, you want the person to have this specific belief or idea. You want to write that down before you tell your story because you're going to need some character or the main character to communicate that message either through their actions or through the words of other people or even through their own mouth if it's not you, communicating what the point of the story is. The second thing is, is what do you want the listener to leave thinking about. As they go about their day, they're leaving your presence now, whether the story is a 2, 5, 10, 24 hour story, whatever it is, you want them thinking about something. You want, it to have, you want to be the person that had an impact. They heard all these other people talk, they didn't listen to any of it. You told the story that they resonated with. You told the story that they had the character that they identified with. You told the story that they could imagine the plot in their mind. You, they could imagine the scenery and where you were, all that stuff. What do you want them to leave thinking about? Sure, the story, but what do you want them to be thinking about as they walk away? What behavior do you want to see change? How do you, say it like this, number three, how do you want to change the way they see the world? That's really what we're looking for, right? We're trying to get people to shift, and that's why we're telling a story. We want to captivate. We want to capture that attention. We want to tell the story and hold the person captive until the very end when we release them, when we're absolutely certain that they're going to go out forth into the world with our message and evangelize that message. That's how we want to change them to see the world in the way that we learned, the way that we saw it. Wow, this is so important that you do this now. Finally, there is one critical element in every story. The hero, the main character, must have a weakness. The main character's weakness needs to be highlighted in the story. And if it's not their main weakness, it has to be one of their weaknesses. And it has to be significant enough, the weakness has to be significant enough that you would like your listener to want the hero to go forward in spite of their weakness. Okay, whatever it is. So if you have a speaker uh, who's going to go give a presentation for 100 people and they get panic attacks in front of groups, you want to make sure that your audience knows that they, personally, they generally experience these panic attacks and here's what happens when they get in front of the audience and here's how they feel and here's what, what happens. They sweat and the, palm, the palms of their hands get all sweaty and, and they start to talk faster and faster and faster and all this kind of stuff and they get really nervous. All those kind of things happen, but the person's going to go out in spite of it all and they're going to communicate their message 
and then they do, and then they get the standing ovation. And somebody tells them, says, boy, I thought you were afraid to talk in front of crowds, but man, you really know how to do it right, don't you? God, you're amazing. That's what you're looking for. You want to show how their weakness slows them down, okay? You want to show how their weakness almost stops the person from doing it, but they do it anyway. They're pushed beyond because that's part of what you want them to take home. They were going to stop themselves. But then you push them through, the main character through, which pushes the identification with your listener through, the difficulty through, the brutal tough thing. They walk through the fire and they come out alive and better for it. And that is how we begin our storytelling. Beginning with the next video, I'll show you some examples of how you can use this every single day.